How many times did you hear or say the words growing up? I dare you. Or you won't do that. You're a chicken. <laughs> and at least if you were like me growing up, those words preceded either things that were so silly or hilarious or foolish or sometimes even destructive. And, and I wonder why. I wonder why the sense of, of daring or goading or uh, encouragement that seems at some points to be juvenile behavior continues to motivate us, at least motivate me, even into adulthood. Well, why I bring that up is that's what I thought about today as I was res uh, observing, reflecting, and seeking to apply a passage of Scripture, in this case, John 7, verses 1 through 24. As I read the words, it, it seemed to me that it was all about peer pressure and public opinion. It begins in 7 verse 1 where we're told that Jesus, as he's traveling around Galilee, wanted to stay in Judea instead of going to Jerusalem for the festival. And the reason is it's, it's starting to get, um, things are getting heated up. There's more and more opposition from the religious leaders. And so his brothers of all people, his flesh and blood brothers, start goading him. Hey, why don't you go? Why don't you perform miracles? Why don't you just come out and say you are who you are? But we're told in verse 5, his brothers didn't even believe him. Now, if Jesus would have given in to peer pressure, he, he knew he was God. He had done miracles, but he knew his time had not come. So he stayed back at least for a few moments. But then he goes. After his brothers leave, he goes, and it makes me wonder why. I wonder if you notice that as you read these passages. And over time, there's public opinion happening. We're told in this passage, some believe him and think he's the Messiah. Others think he's crazy. Others think he's a fraud who deceives the people, verse 12. And in verse 20, after Jesus starts to publicly speak, um, people say, you're demon-possessed. Why are you saying people are out to get you? Well, we've seen many times that people are out to get him. They want to take his life. And so that's just some things I observed in this passage, how Jesus handles peer pressure and how Jesus confronts public opinion. And it's very, very different than the way I do. I'm prone to try to please people. And so I'll try to do things that, that others want me to do, even if I don't always feel like they're right as I reflect on my own life. I'll try to do things to earn people's favor or to earn credit. And I'm very concerned about public opinion, what people think of me, if they like me, if they think I do a good job. I'm very concerned about those things. I'm prone to peer pressure and to public opinion. And so as I took that observation and reflected on my own life, it made me want to kind of apply in this way. Um, I just know I can go so fast and um, I can be so consumed with what others think or, or trying to, to do my best in, in each situation, often with the lens of, is this going to make people happy? Um, is this going to be what people expect or want? And I think my application for today is just to pause. It's to make sure that daily I'm spending time with God and scripture and prayer. It's, it's to pause when I'm feeling pressure. Sometimes I need, I need courage to step out, but so often I should just pause when I'm feeling that pressure to say or do something um, that, that may be more about um, what others want or managing others' expectations or thoughts of me rather than being true to who God's created me to be, trying to live for an audience of one and trying to... to um, to gain the approval, not, not because I'm trying to earn salvation, but because ultimately I want to do what God is asking me to do. I want to be true to the conscience he's given me. And I want to, like Jesus, not give in to peer pressure and not be consumed with public opinion so that I can hear clearly from the Father and put those words into practice. And so as we're observing and reflecting and hopefully applying scripture to our lives. Hopefully this is not a perfect, but a living example 
of what God's doing in my life even today.